Hi guys, today we are going to talk about feature engineering. So, what, why, suddenly why feature engineering, right? We have been talking about logic linear regression and we have been learning about L1 and L2. Why suddenly take this break and kind of do this feature engineering? Is it really even that important? Well, to start off the episode, let me say that for all of the Kaggle challenges that you see, right, currently, probably, or at least, uh, you know, a Kaggle challenge is still a year back. They were mostly won on feature engineering tasks, right? So all of these challenges that you would ever see on Kaggle, most of the winners were basically ones which had won using Kaggle feature engineering of some way or the other. So feature engineering is probably the most important part that comes in a data scientist's role across any organization, any task that you're doing. So in fact, uh, for all of you who are currently doing this course and who are listening to the lectures, all of you are going to do and learn the same thing, right? So what makes you separate from the rest of the crowd is something that is closely related to feature engineering. We are going to talk more about how it kind of separates you. Uh, but the thing that separate, the thing that I didn't distinguishes you as a data scientist from the rest of the crowd is basically how you think intuitively and creatively about all of these things like feature engineering. So feature engineering, in fact, is one of the very intuitive things. It's not even an algorithm. It's basically some engineering hacks that the already in the name says. It's just a set of engineering hacks that you have compiled together to kind of tackle the problems of how you do the data pre-processing task, right? So it's all about the stage where you, before you start trying and fitting an ML problem, we kind of, we are now kind of going back and trying to see how before you even start with the ML problem, how you can use the different multiple features that you have, how you can combine them, how you can engineer different things with them and use them to your best advantage. So that's exactly what feature engineering is. Feature engineering is nothing but a set of hacks which we are going to do to kind of make our data more suitable for machine learning purposes. And this hacks, right, it's something that are not, um, there are not rule, there, there's no algorithm, there's no textbook which says these are good hacks and these are bad hacks. These are hacks and by the very definition of the word hacks, this is something that you come up with, something you designed by your creativity, your intuition about the data. So for this to kind of flow in, you not, not only do you need to be like creative and all, you also need to understand the data very well. So if you understand the data very well and you have a domain expertise on the data, that is something that is going to come really crucial while doing data engineering or rather feature engineering. So that given that is the outlet, that is the thing that we start off. So just to kind of remind you, we are not really going to go and try and fit an ML algorithm right directly from scikit as we have been doing all this while. But we are kind of going back a step and we are trying to kind of understand how feature engineering is to be done before you feed the data to the algorithm. So this is all about how you use different engineering hacks to make your data more suitable for the problem that you have at hand. That's all about it. So now let's get started. So all we have already know this, right? So we know what we are talking out here. So the data is extremely raw and you know, a lot of times you have just get the data directly from scraping the websites, online websites. Sometimes you get data by, you know, crawling through other competitor websites. So a lot of times the data is collected in a really haphazard way and it's extremely raw and uh, you need to really process them to make it more suitable for usage. And that's exactly what we are going to discuss here today. So how do you, you know, do different types of pre-processing to make your data more suitable? So program so far, I'm sure you probably, you're probably familiar with all of this. We have already done the basics of Python. We have done the descriptive and inferential stats. We have gone through linear regression as well as L1, L2 regularization, right? So we fairly understand uh, the, the more important reason why we are doing this part, this feature engineering part right now in this session is because now you have an idea about what linear regression is. You have an idea about L1, L2 regression is, right? So now you absolutely appreciate the different constraints that come with machine learning methods. Now is a very good time to kind of be able to appreciate further why you need to pre-process your data. We already have seen what are the different assumptions under which linear regression work, right? So now it's a good time to kind of go back and see for our data, how you pre-process your data to make it more suitable for those kind of algorithms. So yeah, hopefully today's session is absolutely light. There's nothing very heavy, nothing very algorithmic gradient descent, nothing of all that sort. You're just going to be simple engineering hacks one after the other. That's all about it. So first we are going to talk about something called scaling, centering and skewness. Uh, in fact, before that, we are going to talk about something called outlier detection and missing data. How do you handle that? Uh, after that, we are going to talk about scaling, centering and skewness and then basic data cleaning and pre-processing and finally feature extraction and feature engineering. So that's the agenda for the day. 
Now, until now we have seen all the data that we have dealt with, right? The housing price data set that we dealt with in the linear regression problem. That was a clean data, right? So we really did not need to do much of a pushing here and there to start off with because that was a clean data. But in real life, that is not how most of your data looks like. Most of the time, the data is absolutely, you know, absolutely raw. And raw means it has got date timestamp, it has got HTML data. It's, you have got to clean up. You have to got to clean it up a lot, right, to make it usable for your machine learning problem. So that's exactly something we are going to talk about: how you clean all of that up, how you make your data suitable, nice, and pretty for using in your ML algorithms. So I think one problem that we have discussed already earlier in the linear regression class was about outlier. And we had talked about that also in the linear regression class a bit about how outliers tend to affect your ML predictions. Right? We know we had already seen that when we had an ML, when we had an outlier, our data was not fitting correctly. So now we are going to use the same data that John had used in the previous case of linear regression. And we are using the same data, right? So these are the libraries that we imported. So now using all of that library, you basically figure out, John, that there are three major problems that he had with the current data. The first was that he had some outlier values, right? We understand what outliers are. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of go and kind of get a much more better idea in a bit. But before that, so John realized the data had three major problems, right? One, it was had missing values. It was, it had outlier values in them and it was suboptimally represented. We are going to talk about what all of this individually mean. So in a while, so let's first look at the data, right? So this is the, this is the, so this is the data set, right? So this is the training data that we had used for the ML problem, which is a linear regression problem where we had multiple features of a house and we were trying to predict the price of a house, right? So that was a setting where we try and where we had multiple variables around 35 sorry in this case we have we have 80 column 80 features out of which uh, one is the independent feature which is so until now all the data that we have been seeing mainly for the linear regression problem that we have seen the data was extremely clean right so there was not much of an outlier there were a few outliers here and there we had talked about it in the previous lecture sir but not it was really a nice clean and pretty data set but that's not exactly how most of the data sets in real life look like so now let's have a look at one of the more real life examples. So this was the example that John had picked up. So this has, this is the same problem, right? The same problem where you're trying to predict the house of price of a house. And now instead of the 35 features that we have, you have right now 80 features, right? Or, or 79 features. And out of the 79 features, you can clearly see that some of the features here, right? For example, the land con sorry no the pool qc or the fence right so there are a lot of missing values you can see that right so there are these particular values that you see here nn values right so nn values basically represent that those are the missing values right so you can see nn values here as well in case of ali so you can clearly see the data is not as clear as and clean as, as it was in the previous example right in the previous lecture that we did so obviously we have to clean this data so there are majorly three three things that we are going to talk about today, which I've already explained to you. One is data cleaning and pre-processing, feature extraction and feature engineering, right? So now let's get kind of hands-on with the first part, which is data cleaning and pre-processing. So what does data cleaning and pre-processing exactly com constitute of? So there are three ideas, which is handling outliers, handling missing values and handling skewness. So these are one of the three things that you can do in pre-processing frankly there are a lot more steps which you need to do for example depending on how your data looks like so you can need to clean up html using beautiful soup or something else so there are a lot of steps that are that goes into pre-processing these are just some of the steps that we have taken up for just to make you understand how you decide on which are the actual steps that which are the correct number of steps that you need to do is something that you develop based on intuition of the data how you once you have a look at the data you understand how your data is distributed how your different features are distributed and based on that you take a call so these features the, the, the three steps that are mentioned here the handling outliers and handling missing values and handling skewness are just some of the three sample steps right so just don't just the point being here is don't confuse that anytime someone says data cleaning and pre-processing you are not just sticking to these three processes the multiple processes that goes into data cleaning and pre-processing for this particular session, we are just going to talk about handling outlier, handling missing values and handling skewness. So how, so now we already have talked about handling outliers, right? So let's now try and understand what exactly handling outliers means. 
So before we get there, let's first develop an intuition about what outliers are, right? So before we even talk about handling outliers. So we had seen this in the earlier in the day also in the linear regression problem. We had multiple data points and our whole job was to fit a line through them, right? So you had multiple data points. So this is your Y, which was your sales price. And this was your X, which was say living area. Now you had all of these data points and it was all fine, right? But suddenly now you do the same thing. But now you introduce a data, now you introduce an outlier, right? To the extreme right, say here. And now you're the rest of the points are almost same, right? You don't, there's not much of a change. So you just pass here. You. Right, so now it's exactly, so you have all the data points that you had earlier here. But now if you try and fit a linear regression line, we know that this line would be fitted something like this, right? Because we are trying to minimize errors every time. Every point we are trying to minimize the error from the predictions. So this is why my prediction lies. This is the straight line on which my predictions lie. And this is the error, right? And every step I'm, at every, whenever I'm computing a line, what I'm trying to do is minimize this error. So now if you had a point here, you can clearly say there's a huge error here, right? So to minimize that, you would, your algorithm would construct a line which looks like this, where your error here is very low. So this is what exactly the problem with outliers are, right? So we have, we have kind of seen this in the previous day videos as well that outliers tend to tend to hamper our model right we have seen one of the assumptions of lean normal sorry one of the assumptions of linear regression being the fact that they are not very robust to outliers so obviously we have to out so we have to tackle for outliers right so first let's look at some of the graphs so this is you can clearly see here so this is the graph of sales price versus living area so this is something exactly i was trying to point out so you can clearly see there are some points which are extremely uh, outlierish, right? So you can clearly see they are not part of the distribution. They are, this is this is a straight line that you would tend to see, and you clearly see these two points out here are not someone which are belonging to the actual distribution, right? So you can they are very outliers in terms of living area. Uh, so you can clearly see that this is what I'm mentioning. So sales price and getting the living areas they are in a linear relationship, right? But but at the bottom right there are those two points which we can see are not really belonging to the distribution but they're more of an outlier uh, he decides to plot a few more curves right so you can he now he plotted sales price versus total basement area now you clearly see again this total basement area this particular point out here is an extreme outlier right it's completely right it does not so you can see that there's a straight line probably that fits through here right but you can and that point definitely doesn't pass anywhere close to this particular this entire the straight line that passes through here it's definitely not close to any of the, it's definitely not close to this particular point, right? So you can again clearly see that this is an outlier point here. Now we are gonna try and see for something. So these are all continuous versus continuous variables, right? So now let's analyze some numerical features ex with respect to categorical features. So one of the more important categorical features, I think once we did linear regression, we kind of had an idea, was this particular feature called overall quality, right? We saw that it has the highest weightage when, when trying to predict sales price. So now let's try and plot overall quality versus sales price. You can clearly see here again that your sales price, so there are, there are particular points that you can clearly see are outlier, right? So you know what this is, this is a box plot. So this box plot basically represents that this is the interquartile range. So this is the 25th percentile and this is the 75th percentile and this is the median, right? This straight line that you see here is a median. And we have talked about this in the inferential stats in the descriptive stats section where we are doing visualization, EDA. We have understood how these curves are plotted. So I'm not going to go into detail of explaining them. Uh, as you can clearly see that these are some of the points which are completely outlierish, right? So now let's take a moment before we kind of jump in to figure out what exactly is an outlier. Let's take a moment to understand uh, what is a formal, is there even a definition to outlier? What do you exactly consider an outlier? So from the EDA lecture, if you remember, we had defined outlier as any point which basically is greater than Q3 plus 1.75 into IQF, right? or any point greater than this, any point which is greater than Q3 plus IQF or 
q1 minus 1.75 into I, iqf right in iqr sorry this is iqr interquartile range interquartile range right so anything that was less than q1 minus 1.75 into iqr or q3 plus 1.75 so this I would say is something which is extremely uh, informal and more of a hand thumbs rule kind of a thing. There is nothing which completely, there is nothing which says that this is, there is no literature which defines this, uh, this is the proper definition of outlier. This is more of an indicator definition of outlier but in reality your outliers could look. So now we are going to talk about how to handle outliers right. So before we kind of start to think about what are, how to handle outliers, let's first understand what even is an outlier right. So let's first understand that. So let's take you have you have trying to say plot the same thing right you're trying to do the same thing as we did in the last price so you're trying to plot sales price and you have your say living area right and these were your multiple data points right so all of them apparently lied in a straight line and it was easy for you to fit a line through all of them right so this is exactly what we did in linear regression. So we had multiple data points and we tried to fit the line such that which best fits all these data points, right? So what was an outlier again? So outlier is basically a point that is not closely uh, related to this distribution. That is broadly the overall understanding of outlier is outlier is basically any point which is not belonging to this distribution of points, right? So you can clearly see this distribution of point, all of the points are lying in and around the line, right? Now suddenly say you take this particular point right so this particular point is definitely not belonging to this distribution it is way off from this right. So obviously for a point like this you can clearly see that the error of this line right so this was the error that we saw right this is this is how we measured the error in previous class. So this error is extremely huge so for that what will happen is your new line once you include this kind of a data point in the data set you will see your new line instead of passing like this would probably pass something like this. Right, so you have all your data points here but just because the error is extremely huge on this side you will try and reduce this right. So now your error is minimized on this particular data point but your error is increased on all of this right. So you clearly understand this new line L2 is definitely not the best fit as compared to your previous line L1 and this happened just because you introduced a new point which is way off from the original distribution. This was your original distribution. So this is exactly the problem with outliers and this is why we need to tackle outliers. We have talked about this also in the previous lecture where we talked about linear regression and we saw that it was really not the best idea to have outliers in your data set when you are trying to do uh, linear regression. So how do you handle outliers right? So before that I have already mentioned you why we need to do outlier treatment. So let's look at a plot which is this plot is basically a plot between sales price and living area and you can see that all of these points are lying in a straight line, almost in a straight line, right? Except these two points. These two points are the ones we call as outlier, right? So they are extremely off from the original distribution. This is the original distribution and they are way off from the original distribution. This, that's why we would tend to call them as outliers. So now, as I said, this is, that's what I mentioned in the slide. This is what is mentioned in the slide here. So we have plotted it and we can see this bottom right there are two points right so these were the two points these are the two points that we had plotted here so now let's try and plot some other variables and let's see how it looks like so now you see plot sales price versus basement again you see that all of these points are almost in a straight line uh, at least they are clustered around a particular distribution right so this is all distribution and then you can suddenly see this one single point which is way off from the distribution so this is again called an outlier right so this is very easy to understand when you are looking at graphs but is there a mathematical formula or anything that defines what is an outlier? We will come, come back to that in a minute. So now John was tired of going through all of the numerical data now he wants to look back at some of the categorical data and wants to see if there is some way you can figure out categorical data outliers right. So how do you do that is something called box plot. I think we have already talked about this in EDA. So all you need to do is basically when you pl plot a box plot. So this is we are plotting sales price versus overall quality. You remember overall quality was one of the most strongest indicator of sales price. So in this case you see this particular line. This is the median and this is the box around it which is this is the qu third quartile. This is the first quartile right. So this range is called interquartile range between your first quartile and third quartile and this in the middle is the median and now you see the outlier values are the ones that you see out here right which is basically 
so there's a formula for how do you detect outliers like this in a box plot. So what is the formula? Let's revisit EDA lectures. So this is the definition for formula, right? So sorry, the for definition for outliers. So outliers are defined as this. Anything which is greater than Q3 plus 1.5 into IQR or anything which is less than Q1 minus 1.5 into IQR. So what is again Q3? Q3 is your third quartile. Q1 is your first quartile. What is IQR? IQR is nothing but the difference between your third and first quartile. So that is what is an interquartile range, right? So anything which is greater than Q3 plus 1.5 QR, anything which is Q1 minus 1.5 IQR is basically tend to be called as an outlier as per the box plot, right? So now let's mention this. So box plot defines this as an outlier. Now in real life, is there really a definition of outlier? The short answer is no. There's nothing which says that, okay, this is an outlier and this is not. And what is an outlier is something that is based on your intuition of the data. So for example, someone is the data set consisting of people who have been chosen into the Indian cricket team. And then you suddenly see someone's age being there as 82. And that you would definitely feel as an outlier, right? Because it's hardly unlikely that someone would probably get selected into Indian cricket team at the age of 82. But for the same, for the, let's now take a different data set. And where we are basically trying to calculate how many people would probably survive after the age of 80, right? How many years would people survive after the age of 80? So then you have data sets where people have age 82, 89, 90 and all of that, right? So then the same data point is not anymore an outlier, right? You have someone with age 82 and he's not an outlier anymore because that's what you're trying to do. So depending on how your case to case basis, your data, you, it would probably completely define, you know, it's completely dependent on the situation that you have, the problem that you're solving. What is an outlier? A uh, lot of times outliers could basically be a very strong signal to your data. Outliers, if you just try and kind of cut off outliers, that is not really a good approach because a lot of time outliers would, and we are going to talk about that just after this particular segment. So yeah, to kind of cut the point home is basically we are, there's nothing which says that this is an outlier and this is a definition of an outlier. Outlier is nothing which is defined in literature per se. It's more of an idea that you have about, and there are obviously sophisticated machine learning algorithms also people develop to detect outliers, right? So, in fact, while we are at it, there's another another definition of outliers, which goes something like uh, median plus minus three standard deviation, right? So you have any, for any particular variable, you have the median and you have the standard deviation, which is given by sigma, right? So sigma is a standard deviation. So anything which is median, which is greater than median plus three sigma, or which is less than median minus three sigma is also called an outlier. So as you can, as you have, what the point here being that there's nothing which is an extremely strong or a robust definition of outlier, Dep outlier definition is something which uh, outlier definitions are something that kind of changes as per your problem and how you are solving, how you are approaching it, right? So just don't stick to this idea that anything which is above 1.5 IQR is always an outlier. Anything which is less than Q1 minus 1.5 IQR is an outlier. The definition of outlier and how it is perceived is completely something dependent on the situation. Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.